local campaign reporters are a tough breed. They log countless miles crisscrossing the country, eating bad catering, and filing reports from campaign buses, fast food restaurants, or airport lounges. And what do they get in return? A front row seat to politics in action, of course, but also often a complaint or two what now and again. Then there's the wrath of Donald Trump. After BuzzFeed spent 36 hours with the businessmen from New Hampshire to Palm Beach, political editor McKay Coppins penned a 6,000 word profile of the billionaire businessmen and wrote, quote, what I found was a man startled by his suddenly fading relevance and consumed by a desperate need to get it back. Ouch. Coppin has countless examples of classic Trumpisms, including one instance where Trump sees a photo of Coppin's wife and baby on an iPhone. Wife and baby, wow, congratulations, he emotes. I was just looking down and saying, wow, that's a good-looking woman. Suffice it to say, the piece treats Trump with a healthy dose of skepticism, a trait that Trump seems unwilling to accept. In a Twitter response, the real Donald Trump characterized the profile like this, quote, a dishonest slob of a reporter who doesn't understand my sarcasm talking about him or his wife wrote a foolish and boring Trump hit. Okay, sounds like a man who wants to be governor of New York or president of the United States, doesn't it? McKay Coppins is the aforementioned political reporter for BuzzFeed. Welcome, McKay. Good to be on. You know, I have to tell you, it was so, it's was so it been so interesting to me watching. I've been on both sides of this. I've been the person pushing back, and I've been you know, working with a reporter on a story. They're, but they really have gone out of their way to push back on this story and dispute this. Yeah, I mean, I think this one really struck a nerve. Uh, we just heard, actually, that uh, he fired one of his aides over this story. So obviously it really got to him. I mean, look, I, I set out to write a kind of probing portrait of this man. And what I found was a man who was deeply insecure, worried about his status in the world and how others uh, treated him and what they thought of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's no surprise to me that he is so upset about a profile that treats him skeptically. Uh, but I mean, obviously he's crossed a few lines in Trumpian fashion, dragging my wife into it. But you know, I guess that goes with the territory. <laughs> well, I'm just going to say you got to be careful right let me <laughs> let me read a statement uh, that mr trump's office uh, just sent to us today and it says quote it's a totally dishonest and unfair article written by a politically irrelevant website from the moment the reporter entered the vehicle to the time he left mar-a-lago his only goal was to write a negative piece mr trump is totally unfazed by this article most people in his situation would have just said thank you to Mr. Trump for his graciousness and hospitality. That's from Michael Cohen, senior counsel to Donald Trump. I mean, it does strike me that for someone who has been in business and sort of dabbled in politics, I would think he'd have a thicker skin and be a little bit more well, he's totally used unfazed. to. Oh, right. Well, he's unfazed. His staff is freaking out. <laughs> right, That's right, what right. we're supposed to believe here. Right. I, I mean, I look, I, I think that there, there must have been a change at some point in his career where he became more like this. And over the course of researching this story, I spent a lot of time watching old interviews with him, reading old profiles, and he wasn't always this thin-skinned. Uh, you know, so, over the course of his career, he's become more and more obsessed with his fame and celebrity, uh, and particularly his polig- political celebrity. I think uh, us political reporters know that he desperately tries to get our attention all the time in a way that seems almost, you know, unpleasant and small for him. You, you know, sending emails to re- to political reporters and trekking up to Manchester to try to get cable news hit, uh, attention. But but it's obviously something he cares very much about. So, but what is driving this talk about politics? Is it? I mean, do you, uh, from the piece, it sounds like you don't think he's seriously <laughs> going to run for president again. And then there's this sort of talk about running for governor. And in the piece, he says, "I didn't start the governor thing. I was approached six weeks ago by the biggest leaders in the Republican Party, and I said, let me think about it.' And they approached me again and again and again. Mm-hmm. So, it's from the piece, it strikes me you don't think that he's going to be running for governor. I, I will eat my words if he runs for governor. Governor, I am not putting money on it. Although, to be honest, the only thing he really has to do to refute this whole story and the whole premise is to run for governor or run for president, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I don't think so. I think that even in the case of go- the governor, the gubernatorial bid, uh, his, his claim is that a bunch of Republicans came and approached him. Yeah. Uh, but we've also seen reporting that it was actually one of his own aides who was seeding the rumors in the first place.
place. And but is, is it part? Is it that he's just you know sort of done, gone as far as he can in the world of business, and that's why there's this fascination with the world of politics? I actually asked him about that. I said, you know, is this just that you're done with real estate and reality TV that you're kind of bored of it and you're searching for stimulation now? And uh, he, his response to me was, "Who knows what's in the deepest part of my mind? That could be true." Okay, <laughs> well we're gonna leave it there and let people ponder that. McKay Cobbins, it is it's a really fascinating piece. Great job. Thank you. Uh, and hang in there. All right. <laughs> All right.